NTV, Central and Western Nebraska's most trusted news. With Colleen Williams, Dave Green, Tim Wright Weather, and Darren Winberg Sports. This is NTV News at 10. This is WPLT News at 6. When you send your kids off on the school bus, you expect them to arrive safely. Tonight, though, a bus driver accused of driving drunk with a busload of kids. Thank heavens. I have been waiting and waiting for that to open. Yeah, you're tired of the traffic in Sevier County. Us too. A new two mile stretch of road is open. It could make things a little easier for you. And she thought it was a normal school assembly. Now one Anderson County educator is at the center of a massive award. What she did to earn it. Good evening. We're so glad you're with us for WVLT News at six o'clock. I'm Casey Wheelis. Ted is off tonight. Streaming live to start your day. This is Good Morning Buffalo. Good morning, Buffalo. Five o'clock. Glad to have you with us on a Friday. Good Friday, of course. You're looking live at the Broadway Market this morning. Empty now, but give it about an hour. <laughs> it's going to be packed with people, of course, doing their last minute Easter shopping. Want to say good morning to you. This Friday morning, we're glad to have you with us. We have Josh in for airing this morning. Josh, those doors open at six at the Broadway Market. Yeah. People come down the escalator and straight to the stands. Hi guys, glad to have you with us. Happy Friday. Live streaming and on the KUTV app, this is KUTV 2 News This Morning. Dash cam footage shows the moment a 12 year old was stopped driving on I-15. I'll share more about how this all happened. New developments this morning in the case of Chad Daybell. Yeah, what a judge has issued to his attorneys, plus when jury selection gets underway. New information about a SWAT standoff in Salt Lake City from the live desk. Why police say a man barricaded himself in an apartment last night. Well, welcome to 2 News this morning. It is now 6 o'clock and look at that sad daffodil hiding from the cold and rain and snow to start our Easter weekend. But they're, they're eventually going to be happy and they've Aww. had a lot of nice water this spring too. So That's true. Fox 5 traffic reporter Annie May. She helps you stay ahead of your morning commute. Which is good news for you. And brings the fun to mornings. Putting on our dancing shoes. Navigate your mornings with Annie May. Weekdays 4 to 11 a.m. Stay with us. Fox 5. Stay ahead. Wow. Good morning, Arizona. Some beautiful colors in our morning sky as we start off this good friday counting our blessings it just yes wanted we to are. say that right? i know big <laughs> uh, big weekend for easter plans uh so the weather's going to change you need to know about that so let's get over to april good morning good yes. morning to you yeah it's going to start changing even today the okay. winds are really going to pick up across oh boy. the state We're looking now at video of a crane that has been brought in to help clear the debris from the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Multiple federal, state, and local resources are working tirelessly to clear the channel and find the bodies of those tragically killed in this incident. Thanks for staying with WJZ. I'm Vic Carter. And I'm Scenic Ebra Ab. It could take weeks, even months, to clear that debris and get ships back into the port of Baltimore. We're in your corner with team coverage this morning with the latest updates on the victims and from Governor Moore as well. But we'll start with CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve. Tragic, tragic situation in our uh, Winnebago County Rockford region. It's an unimaginable what they're enduring at this point in time. The trauma of this magnitude impacts all of us. These are dark days, uh, but we as Rockfordians will get through this. A deadly rampage through a Rockford neighborhood shakes the community. Four people, including a teenage girl, were killed. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Thanks for joining us. This is ABC 15 Arizona at 3. 
stock market has surged out of the gate in 2024. Will it continue? And will we benefit from the climb? Plus. Live from WCNC Charlotte, this is Charlotte Today with your hosts, Mia Atkins and Eugene Robinson. Well, we made it to Friday, <laughs> a good Friday, that is, because is. this is the prelude to Easter at Right now at 10, three girls, all 13 years old or younger, arrested for beating a man to death. Tonight, the victim's family speaks only with Fox 5 Plus. To clear the key bridge, officials bringing in one of the largest cranes on the East Coast. It is not going to be days or weeks or months. This is going to take time. Tonight, where recovery efforts stand now. And undercover police officers could be coming to your local convenience store. The latest effort to fight shoplifters in the D.C. region. The News at 10 begins right now. Now we start the 10 tonight with a Fox 5 exclusive. 12 years old, 12 years old, and 13 years old. All girls, all charged with killing a man in Northwest D.C. This is what's next. Tonight, marking a major milestone, House 330 in Akron is celebrating after opening its doors one year ago. Collapse cleanup. Tonight, cleanup operations continue in Baltimore. Plus, a man who was on the bridge moments before the disaster is now speaking. And the eclipse countdown continues. Our national Verify team explains the effects it can have on your pets when darkness takes over. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Fisher. Today is March 30th. ABC 17 News this morning on KMIZ starts now. It's 6 a.m. on this Saturday morning, and here are a few of the stories we're following today. We're taking a look at shipping ports around Missouri following the Baltimore Bridge collapse earlier this week. Breaking right now on WCCB News at 6, police were on the scene of a murder investigation in University City. We have the latest information coming up. Plus, police make an arrest after a 17-year-old fast food worker is shot and killed. The details on the suspect police took into custody. And sunny skies and near record highs carry into our first week of April, but rain chances aren't far away. I'm tracking the severe potential coming up in your WeatherWise forecast. WCCB News at 10 starts now with a breaking news alert. And breaking tonight, a murder investigation is underway in University City. Thanks for joining us here for the News at 6. I'm Marvin Beach. Let's take a live look right now at the scene on University City Boulevard near John Kirk Drive. Now, Medic says one person was killed there. This From Skyline Drive, this is Coda Territory News at Noon. And hello, I'm Eric Gardner. Thank you for joining me today on Coder Territory News at Noon. Rapid City Police have released the names of the three people arrested during a high-risk drug raid. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Panic and anxiety. Tonight, one local mom recounts a jarring viral video showing her teenage son being beat up at school. Her hopes for the students involved and Baltimore bridge removal work underway to clear the charm city's busy port and the money raised to support the victims families of live luck right now. And we have some showers and I've even seen some lightning out there, some thunder and lightning up around the Hagerstown region. We'll talk about it, show you the latest radar and go into your Easter Sunday forecast coming up. And arena deal done. What's next for the Virginia neighborhood that won't welcome the Caps and Wizards after DC won to keep the teams in town? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9. I am Ben Dennis. We begin with breaking news tonight. Cell provider AT&T says it has started notifying millions of customers about stolen, sensitive, and personal data. Welcome to Almanac North. I'm Maria Hewitt. Tonight we are joined by Heidi Ringhofer of the Minnesota Free Holiday Meal Available to Anyone. I'm Maria Hewitt. Thank you for joining us on Almanac North. I'll see you all next time.
Good night. just ahead of Tuesday's stadium election, plus lifting up the hood on some huge developments being promised in Kansas City. Are you ready to take the family to Barbie World? Those stories and the rest of the week's news straight ahead. Week in Review is made possible through the generous support of AARP Kansas City, RSM, Dave and Jamie Cummings, Bob and Marlise Gorley, the Courtney S. Turner Charitable Trust, John H. Mize, and Bank of America N.A. co-trustees. The Restaurant at 1900. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nick Haynes. Great to have you with us. Are you ready to finally decide the stadium tax? We're just days away now. I think our panelists are ready to get over with it. Dave Helling has been one of the most prominent writers... Welcome to This Week in South Carolina. I'm Gavin Jackson. The House last week passed its $13.2 billion budget, an effort, le an effort led by House Ways and Means. You can always stay up to date with the latest news throughout the week by checking out the South Carolina Lead podcast, which I host on Tuesdays and Saturdays that you can find on SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org or wherever you find podcasts. For South Carolina ETV, I'm Gavin Jackson. Be well, South Carolina. Local productions seen on Delta College Public Media are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, good evening everyone. I'm Mike Redford and this is the follow-up. Coming up on tonight's show, what is AI, artificial intelligence, and why are so many people talking about it? Is this something to fear or embrace? WVLT News begins now with breaking news. They're about to be flooded. Absolutely flooded. This is the mothership of the sport. This is the coveted job in women's basketball. Tonight, the search is on to find the next Lady Vols head coach after Kelly Harper was fired today by the university. Plus, new details tonight on the case against the man accused of killing one Blunt County deputy and hurting another. And we're hearing from Loudoun County's mayor and sheriff tonight as the investigation into a double murder on Easter Sunday continues. Thanks for from joining your us. your local trusted news source, WVLT News starts now. 
Thanks for joining us for WVLT News at 7 o'clock. I'm Casey Wheelis. Will is on assignment tonight. We'll hear from him in just a minute. But first, breaking news tonight. Fire crews. Right now, the threat of severe storms lasting into the night. I'm giving you the first alert on timing and the possible dangers while you sleep. Strong storms toppling trees and bringing a barrage of hail. Honest to God, the noise was just overwhelming. Windows just sounded like it was crashing. I kept coming in. Racing to fix a dangerous stretch of road. I still think it's crazy for anybody to ride their bicycle or take their kids or strollers out on the gravoid. New plans unveiled for a street known for crashes, but residents argue they need to go further. They're just not thinking. Live, First Alert 4 starts now. Tonight we continue to track the severe weather threat that will stretch into the overnight hours. Radar shows a line of storms moving across the metro. This is First Alert 4 at 10. I'm Corey Stark. I'm Samantha Jones. We've got team coverage tonight tracking the damage from both earlier and also ready to pivot at any moment to what's coming now. Right now on 5 on your side at 10. We start tonight in storm alert. Right now, we're awaiting our next round of storms. The first round earlier tonight dropped heavy rain, hail, and packed damaging winds across the bi-state. It even prompted a tornado warning as many cars packed the roads during the evening commute. The next round is moving through as you head to bed, so it's important to stay on high alert overnight. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. We have live deep coverage tonight of the damage and helping you prepare for the threat of nocturnal storms. First, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell, who has been here all day and night tracking the severe weather, Scott. Well, unfortunately, the severe weather itself hasn't been all that widespread. We've had pockets where we've had problems. but Groups that were criticized by election officials in Alabama and Mississippi push back what you should do to protect yourself if you're an AT&T customer. Plus, Newton is getting ready for the Loose Caboose Festival, which happens to be just a couple weeks away. Live from downtown Meridian, always local, always on, this is WTOK News 11 Midday. Well, welcome into the Monday edition of Midday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Lindsay Hall. We want to get the week started off on the right foot, and that means checking in with meteorologist Aviana Smith for the first look at today's weather. I know one thing, the weekend, Aviana, was just glorious. It was absolutely beautiful, Lindsay. We're starting off a new week, a new month with new weather patterns moving in for us. And we're going to do it with a smile on your, our face. A bit cloudy out there for our Monday afternoon. 